name so that uh, we can be blessed. We established last service that this world system is not our system. A lot of you, hallelujah, you're in the world, but the world says you should not be of the world. And a lot of you are seeking your blessings the way the world seeks them. And they're not going to happen that way for you. If you're a child of God, it's going to be important for you to understand that God's kingdom is the system that God has established for us to operate in. It deals with how we deal with money, how we deal with relationships, how we deal with our, our commitment to him. You have so many people today that say they don't believe in God, but there's no proof. There's no indication. Uh, there's no commitment. There is no relationship there. Hallelujah. And that is not what we as people of the kingdom of God, hallelujah, uh, do. We uh, establish for our lives what God's kingdom principles are concerning others, concerning the world, concerning sin, concerning our own sin. Uh, and then we use those principles. For example, in Jesus' name, in the world, uh, the, uh, we uh, when we look at leadership or we look at those that are in charge, we see that they basically lord themselves or rule over. The Bible says the greatest among us should be the least and the servant would be the master or the leader. Amen. So in the kingdom system, service is what leads to promotion. If you don't serve, if you don't humble yourself, then God will not exalt you. The Bible says humble yourself and God will exalt you in due time. In the world, hallelujah, we see people who want to elevate themselves sometimes at the expense of putting others down. So we need to know how to operate in kingdom culture. So turn with me to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 3. Hallelujah. And then I want to look at Luke 10 and 9 and Matthew 11 and 12. Acts chapter 3 first. Amen. Now, Peter and uh, come on, stand with me, please. And Peter and John went up into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame or crippled from his mother's womb, was carried, whom those that carried him laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. That word in the Greek means belonging to the right time and place. So laying at a gate called the right time and place. Say it with me. The right time, the right place. To beg alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked or begged for a alm or for some change. And Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. And he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked Entering into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. Amen. So here's the story. Man crippled laying at the gate. Hallelujah. Been there all his life. He was born crippled. He also had people who laid him at the gate to beg. But Peter and John on this day, during the hour of prayer, something different happened. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. So we see, hallelujah, uh, what happened. He was healed. And instead of laying at the gate, say this with me, he went through the gate. Say this, he got access to the right time in the right place. And Jesus said, now look with me, hallelujah, at Luke chapter 10, verse 9. Luke 10, verse 9. And Jesus healed the sick that are therein and said unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh or close unto you. Say this with me. The kingdom of God, kingdom of God is, close is close unto you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. The kingdom of God kingdom is close, close unto you. Now look with me at Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. And that will be our last scripture in Jesus' name. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence 
and the violent take it by force. Say that with me. The violent take it by force. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. We praise you for your goodness and your mercy this day. We pray that you would open the eyes of our understanding and give us a revelation about the kingdom culture and what it will take for us to enter into the kingdom, a place of power, a place of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, a place where we can see supernatural things happen for our lives, our children, our friends, our church, our family, a place where we can see signs, wonders, and miracles, and we can rise above the curses that are on this world, the violence, the division, the hatred, the lack, hallelujah, the sin, and we can rise above it and be a peculiar people that our children, our families, our marriages would stand as a bright and shining example of you and your power and your glory. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Before you sit down, say this with me, on the brink, say it loud, on the brink of a blessing. In Jesus' name, you have been sitting in the presence of the Lord. We've been talking to you about the kingdom of God. And one thing about the kingdom of God is that it is a spiritual kingdom. You cannot see it. The Bible says it does not come with observation. So when we talk about kingdom culture, we're talking about a culture that has its foundation in the spirit realm. Now, a lot of people don't believe in the spirit realm, but... Uh, truth of the fact of the matter is the spirit realm is realer than the natural realm. And the reason I say that is that the natural realm will one day disappear. You, Your physical body will disappear. That chair you're sitting in will disappear. But the spirit realm is eternal. You are a spirit and you live in a body. Your body will return back to the dust when you die but your spirit, the Bible says, will return to God. So the spirit realm is actually realer, even though you can't see it. And because you can't see it, it doesn't seem as significant. So when you go through a trial, let's say you're having a trial with money, you'll focus more on the fact that you don't have no money instead of focusing on the spirit that it takes to get some money. Amen. Because it takes a spirit to get some money. You have to walk in a spirit of wealth and blessing, and then that blessing, and, some, and oftentimes that blessing is money, will come to you, it will attract you. You have to walk in a spirit, hallelujah, of being diligent and faithful. The Bible says in order to be blessed, you have to be faithful over a little, yeah. and then God will make you rule over a much. Amen. Faith is the way God blesses us. Faith is God's kingdom currency. Just like in the world you need money to buy stuff, in the kingdom you need faith to get stuff. Amen. Amen. The Bible says your gift, hallelujah, but it really means bride will make room for you. That's not, Even though that's in the Bible, it's not talking about the kingdom. It's talking about in the world. And if you want access to something, just spend a little money. You want a girl, spend some money. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You want a door open for you, spend a little money. You get you. The Bible says that this is talking about the kingdom, it's talking about the world, that money answers all things. In the world, that's true. If you can get some money, you can get most anything you want. But we know that's not true in the kingdom because if it was true, why do people kill themselves that have money? Why do people, Jeffrey Epstein was a serial pedophile and he was a billionaire, so it didn't answer that. Money didn't answer that. So, we in the key kingdom, faith is God's spiritual currency. That's why even how you deal with your money when it comes to church. Let's say, God, you've been at this church, and God and gave you witty inventions and gave you faith, and the word that you received has blessed your life, and now you're getting blessed and you won't tithe. That's a faith issue. That has nothing to do with money. God ain't looking at you saying, oh, you didn't give me $12.58 or you didn't give me 10%. God looking at you and saying, you ain't got no faith. Because I don't bless you, but you won't, you don't have enough faith. You still look at the fact that you could, and I'm going to tell you, when you've been broke, that spirit of poverty can still be on your life, even if you get some money. Amen. Amen. I know a whole lot of people with a lot of money, and they still live like they broke. Amen. Stingy. Amen. Shiesty, glory to God, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. 
Brother came to me one day, very successful brother, came to me at the church and had me an envelope and said, this is my tithe. I looked at it, I'm like, well, you're broke if this is your tithe. That's not a tithe. I did, you, you, that's not, no, no. That's a tithe for somebody that's making $1,000 a month. I know you make way more than that. But see, it's a faith issue because faith is the currency of the kingdom. And here's the issue. Some of y'all have faith stronger in some areas, and because that faith is currency of the kingdom, you have success in that area. But you don't have faith in other areas. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, the Bible tells us when it talks about money, he says that you have abounded in all things in utterance. He says, also make sure that you abound in the grace of how you deal with your money. Your grace of faith. Because in the kingdom, hallelujah, faith is God's currency. So if you want to be blessed, you got to have faith. The Bible says in Jesus' name, he that comes to God must first believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. The first part of that scripture talks about belief. All y'all believe God is, I think. But do you believe he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him? That's faith. Because you can have belief and not faith. You can't have faith without belief, but you can have belief without faith. A lot of people believe that don't have faith. Faith means I'm putting my life on it. Hallelujah. Faith means I am standing on what God says. I'm walking in what God says. Hallelujah. I put my I, uh, uh, I put my, my 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 life on it. And Jesus said, that's what faith is. Faith is what Abraham did when he took Isaac and said, I'm about to offer you up as a burnt sacrifice because God, I believe, and the Bible tells us why I did it. He said, because he believed that even if God allowed him to kill a son, that God would raise him from the dead. You know why? Because that son was a son that God promised him. That was Isaac. That wasn't the son he created through his own power with Hagar. That was the son God gave him that he created with his hundred year old wife. And he 99. So he believed that even if I kill him, God will raise him from the dead. So he put his life, his son, on his faith in God and God's provision. So it is important to understand if we're going to operate in the kingdom, how to operate in faith. How to live in faith. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Bible tells us. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if there's something in your life you're hoping for, but you don't see it, faith, if you're going to operate in faith, you have to do things that create substance of that. Amen. For example, let's say you're a single mother, you and you got children, and you, you, you like to be married, but there's no, no man in your life. Faith would be you loving yourself. Faith would be you elevating the value that you have in you. Because if you don't value, you ain't no man going to value. You. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, that would be faith. Faith would mean, hallelujah, that you're already preparing yourself for a husband. You're already learning how to submit, even though you don't even have a man. You're submitting your spirit. You're already learning, hallelujah, in Jesus' name, how to guard your mouth or your tongue. Even though you don't have a man. So then God can say, well, I can see you operate by faith. Bam, I'm going to send you a good man. That's what faith is. Now, one of the things, hallelujah, concerning faith, that's so vitally important, and something that we must learn to operate in, in Jesus' name, Hallelujah, in Jesus' name, amen, is that faith makes things that seem distant or non-existent come into reality. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not things. So in other words, faith is the thing when you operate in it, even though something seems unlikely, it was unlikely that Abraham at 99 years old and Sarah at 90 would have a baby. 
But the Bible says being strong in faith, he gave glory to God because he believed that the God that promised him was able to do it. Tell somebody, say, God promised it. Promise say, I believe, I believe he's able to do it. To so faith makes things unreasonable seem reasonable. The Bible says all things are possible to those that believe. Faith makes things abnormal seem normal. For example, healing is normal to me. And somebody told me, Pastor, you prayed for me last week, and the doctor told me I had cancer, and I went back and they kept fighting. That would be normal to me. Because I've seen it done. I've seen it happen before. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Are you following? Faith may see things that seem poss impossible, possible. Amen. It causes the supernatural to become normal. Now, Luke 10 and 9, turn back to Luke 10 and 9. I want to show you what else faith does. Luke 10 and 9. Luke 10 and 9, I read it already. Amen. And he healed the sick there and said unto them, the kingdom of God is where? Close. Close. Will you listen to me real quick? What faith does, it makes what seems far off close. Tell somebody to say, right now, right, now. right, next, to you, right next to you, is your healing, is your breakthrough, is your blessing. Tell somebody to say, right now, you say, you may not see it right now, but right in the seat right next to you is the power for that problem you got. Amen. It, it makes it seem close. Because see, if it doesn't seem close, if it seems distant, it will also seem impossible. If it seems far away, it will seem like, even though I believe it, I don't have access to it. Are you following me? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So that's what faith does. Say this with me. My healing is close. Say this. My next level is close. Say this. My breakthrough is close. And what it does, it gives me confidence that even though I don't see it or it's not there, I know that I can yet have access to it. It doesn't seem like it's way far away. Tell somebody, say, whatever you're looking for God to do. Say, wherever you're looking for God to take you. Look at your neighbor and say, it ain't as far as you think. It gives me the confidence where I can be fully persuaded that even though I can't see it, even though it doesn't look like it, I know, even though it's invisible or in the spirit, I know I can access it because it is close. Yes, yes. Romans 13 and 10, turn there real quick. Romans 13 and 10. That's why Romans 13 and 10 tells us that we ought to wake up. Look at your neighbor and say, wake up. Wake up. Say, 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 I'm sorry, wrong, wrong scripture. Amen. In Jesus' name. Uh, uh, it says, Thirteen and eleven, Amen. Thirteen and eleven. It says, "And know this: that now is high time to awake out of your sleep." Touch your neighbor and say, "You need to wake up." Need to wake up. Says, so look at him and say, "You need to quit worrying, crying, being all upset, losing sleep, on medication. You need to quit all that." Hallelujah! Why? He said, "You need to wake up out of your sleep." It says, "For now, your salvation." That's not talking about just going to heaven. It's talking about salvation from that problem, from that enemy, from depression, from sickness, from disease. He says, "Your salvation is where nearer than when you believed." In other words, Hallelujah! Wants you to understand that what God has for you is not in some far distant place. Are you following me? Tell somebody and say, the kingdom yeah. is right here, right saying it is right now, right say this is the right time right. and the right place, right place for your healing. Touch your neighbor and say, whatever you believe in God for, you're going to get it today. Amen. Hallelujah. It's right here. It's right now. It's not far away. It's not hard to get to. You may not see it. You may not feel it. It may not be physically be able to access but it is right close to you. And if you grab hold of it today by faith, your healing is going to come. Your breakthrough is going to come. Your next level is going to be here today. Turn me to Romans 
chapter 10, verse 6. Romans chapter 10, verse 6. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, touch your neighbor and say it's not. It's say it's, it's, it's close. Right? Romans chapter 10. He says, but the righteousness, the righteousness which is of faith, this is how faith talks, speaks this way. Don't say in your heart, Lord, come on down from heaven and bless my family. Lord, come on down from heaven and heal my body. That is to bring Jesus down from above. Keep going. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Jesus again from the dead. Lord, heal me. You already been healed. Amen. Lord, forgive me. You already been forgiven. You just need to grab hold of it. Lord, give me victory over that enemy. You already got victory. The Bible says that all things are under your feet. Hallelujah, Jesus. Name. You need to grab hold of it. But what does the righteousness of faith say? That the word, what you need, isn't far. It is close. And it is so close, you, it's in your mouth. Just when I say it's so close, so close. I can taste it. I can taste it. Do you hear me in there? Do you hear me? Tell somebody I say, I can taste it. I can taste it. Oh, I can taste that blessing. I can taste that even. I can taste that virtue. It's close. It's in your mouth. Tell somebody I say, it's in my heart. In my heart. Say, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I just believe that I believe that I believe in my heart. There ain't nothing to indicate that it's going to happen. I can't really know and explain to you why, but it is so close. It's in my heart. See, when you got that kind of faith, the devil can't stop you. Because when the devil attacks you, you know your victory is right there. Woo! When the devil tries to discourage you, you know, hallelujah, edification and being built up and overcoming is right there. It ain't something that seems so far. Because you know something, you guys? Sometimes when something takes so long and you ain't got it, it begins to seem like it's not attainable. So you got to have this kind of faith that is close. Turn to Acts 17 real quick. Quick. Turn with me to Acts 17. Acts 17. Look with me. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And Acts 17. Look with me at verse. Hallelujah. 27. Verse 27. Now the Bible's talking about God. It says that we should seek after the Lord if happily we might feel after him. Why? You got to feel that. that. A lot of people say, you can't feel a little. Yes, you can. You can feel Amen. the presence of God. Amen. See, but if you're not, but if you don't realize, he said, if you feel after him, you'll find him because though he is what? Not far, not far from every one of us. Just somebody say, God ain't far. Not from, not far. from your trial, from your, your test, your, test. Your, trouble, your trouble, your issue, your, issue. your breakthrough, your, breakthrough. your blessing. Yes. Amen. Go to the next verse. That we should seek after him. For in him we live and move and breathe and have our being. So the Bible says he's so close you in him. See? But see, you, you have to feel after the Lord to understand that. So when you come to church, you can't be standing in a place to where the Holy Spirit is here and you ain't you resisting it or you're not open to it. You gotta feel. If you feel out there, you'll realize, oh, faith is right here. Power is right here. Yes. Breakthroughs right here. Amen. New beginnings right here. Now, if you don't do that, you're gonna get all caught up with everything else going on around. But if you're gonna operate in the kingdom system, you have to know that even though I can't see it or touch it, it's right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear me today? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. It ain't far away. Even they been say, quit, quit tripping, quit worrying. Yeah. Amen. Quit stressing out. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Quit giving up. Amen. Amen. Know that it's right there. It's right here. Hallelujah. So here we have a story about a man. And this man was crippled. And he laid at a gate every single day. And the Bible said, now, if he's grown, turn back to Acts chapter 3, please. If he's grown, we know that he's at least 21 years old. And the Bible said he was born crippled from his mother's womb. 
Acts 3, please, verse 1. The Bible says the man was lame from his mother's womb. Now, he's a grown man now. So that means for at least 21 years, he's been laying at this gate. And the Bible says that every day, people help him get to the gate. And they lay him at the gate for the purpose of begging for a chump change. Every single day. Touch your body and say, you can be close, can be close. To, your to your healing, your breakthrough, breakthrough. your blessing, blessing, and never get it. Never get because it. you are not cognizant of the fact that I'm laying right at, a, at the entryway or the access to my healing or my blessing. The place he was laying was called beautiful. It means belonging to the right time and to the right place. You can be right at the break of the right time and the right place, right at the access, right at the gate of the right time and the right place, and not even know it, and be laying right there, still crippled, still broke, still toe up, still depressed, still in trouble, not knowing that everything I need is right here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. That happened to Hagar. Hey Amen. Didn't know that she was dying of thirst with her son, but it was a well of water right next to her, right close to her, where she could access that blessing in Jesus' name. But see, the woman at the well knew. The woman at the well had been bleeding for 12 long years, but she had enough faith to realize, you know what? Jesus is here, and if I can just touch, all I got to do is get close enough to touch. And she got close to Jesus, and the Bible says the fountain of her blood was dried up. Why? Because she had enough faith to realize, yeah, I've been bleeding for 12 years, but today is my day, and I just got to get close enough just to touch. Touch somebody and say, get close enough to faith, to your blessing, to your healing, that you get what God has for you. Quit letting things distance you from God. Your trial can't separate you from the love of God. What you're going through can't keep you from getting what God has for you. Do you hear me today? What you're struggling with, hallelujah, has nothing to do with the fact that God said, I'll be with you like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the midst of the fire. But God says, I'll be with you like Daniel. The Bible says, was thrown in a lion's den. But it didn't mean God wasn't there. God shut up the mouth of the lion. And you got to know today that you are right on the brink of your blessing. So you better not quit. You better not give up. You better not throw in the towel. You better not let somebody discourage you and make you think you can't be blessed. You are right. Touch my son, right on the brink. Right on the brink of a blessing. Right on the brink of my breakthrough. Right on the brink of my next level. Right on the brink of my healing. You better not give up. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible says the kingdom is closed. The kingdom is closed. Look at you that say the kingdom is closed. Say so neighbor, let me tell you a secret. What you've been waiting for is right there. Don't give up. Don't go in the towel. Don't quit. Hallelujah, baby. I know you've been struggling, but what you don't know, weeping may endure for a night, but your blessing comes in the morning, and you know when it's darkest, amen, I tell you to go outside right before the sun breaks. That's the darkest time of all. That's the time where you really feel like quit. But what you don't realize, then you just wait a couple more minutes, your sun is going to begin to rise. Hallelujah. Your breakthrough is on the horizon. Your next level of knowing is coming. Oh, I declare it in this place right now that if you just don't quit and give up, hallelujah, your healing is closer than you think. Your next level is closer than you think. That cure is closer than you think. Now, you don't hear me up in here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The white people don't quit. That's what I said, if it's that close, look at it and say, hey, if it's that close, why don't you just reach out and take it? <laughs> Woo! Look at it and say, if it's that close, why don't you just put your foot up and put your foot 
on the devil right now in Jesus' name. If it's that close in Jesus' name. Amen. What's the problem? What is the problem if it's that close? Turn to Matthew. What was it? 11? 11. 12? I tell you what the problem is. The problem is this. You ain't violent enough. That's the problem. You're playing too much. You know, you're playing. You're playing. Well, what you mean, Pastor? Your relationship with God, you ain't violent enough. Your commitment, you ain't violent enough. Your faith, you got faith, but it ain't violent enough. Amen. A amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. That's the problem. It's right there. But in order for you to get it, the Bible says. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom suffered violence. Because mm -hmm. somebody said, you can get through the gate, you but you're going to have to get a little more violent. Look, look at your neighbor and say, you have to get a little more serious about your blessing. Look at your neighbor and say, you have to get a little more violent about your healing. Look at somebody and say, you going to have to get a little more angry about your breakthrough. You look at somebody and say, you going to have to have a little more resolve about, hallelujah, what the devil is trying to destroy you with. And let the devil know, ah, uh, uh, devil, how uh, they brought me this far to fail. You going to have to get a little more violence. Hallelujah. have to get a little more violence. That's all. It's just going to take a little more violence. It ain't that it's that far away. It's just that in order for you to get it, you're going to have to, hallelujah, put your foot down. You're going to have to get a little more serious. See, you, a lot of us, amen, we minimize the seriousness of spiritual things. So, you know, if I miss church, it really don't matter. You know, if I don't really line my family up, with the things of God, you know, I, I, we go to church, but, you know, it's not really a, a, a precedent for us. See, because of that, all you're going to do is get close to the blessing. Hmm. That's all. Amen. There's a story in the Bible, in the book of Joshua, when they entered into the promised land, they came into this fenced city called Jericho. Now, the word Jericho means fragrant. Which means it symbolizes just because you smell it don't mean you're going to eat it. <laughs> just because you see it don't mean you're going to taste it. Hallelujah. So what God told Joshua he had to do, he had to exemplify some violence. He said, this is all I want you to do. You go to the wall and you march. Tell somebody, say, put on your walking shoes. Put on your boots, amen. Dress yourself up. Get dressed up like you're going to fight. Just act like you're going to fight. And you march around that wall six days. And on the seventh time, on the seventh day, hallelujah, once the seventh time is up, I want you to blow the trumpet. What is the trumpet? The trumpet is the instrument you blow when the army is ready to attack. Which means I just want you to put on a little more violence to your appearance, to your faith about the things of God. I don't want you to start compromising and just come to church out of a routine. I want you to know that you know that you know that the inheritance and the blessing is in the house. And I'm not going to let the devil steal it. I'm not going to let him take it. I'm not going to let him destroy me or discourage me. So he said, when he blow the trumpet, I want you to shout. What is a shout? It symbolizes that the army has gained victory in Jesus' name. And I want you to let the devil know that I'm coming to get my blessing. I'm coming to get my breakthrough. I'm not giving up. I'm not turning back. And the Bible says when they did it, the walls came down. They rushed in and got the blessing. So what was it about this man? Why could he lay out a gate for 20 to 30 years and never enter into what God had for him? Tell somebody that say, because sometimes because you cripple, you cripple, it makes you think you can't be violent. Makes you think you can't be violent. Can I just talk to you for a minute? Tell somebody that said, I can be crippled and violent at the same time. You know, the crippled, the crippled man is you, amen? We're the crippled man. 
Hallelujah. But touch somebody and say, don't let your crippleness take away your violence. And then don't make the fact that you got some problems make you timid. Don't make the fact, hallelujah, that you got some issues make you relinquish the violence to lead your family or to lead your ministry or to make the stand. Don't do that. See, too many of you allow your crippleness to take away your violence. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Tell somebody and say, the fact that I'm crippled don't mean I'm no punk in Jesus' name. Matter of fact, turn back to Matthew. Turn back to Matthew in Jesus' name. Uh, go back uh, 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 two verses. Uh, uh, go back one more. Go back. Go back. Look what he said about John. He, he said, from John the Baptist, the kingdom is preached. And, and he suffered violence and the violence taken by force. So look at the example that he gives. He says, as he departed, Jesus began to talk about the multitudes concerning John. He said, when you went out to the wilderness, what, what did you go to see when you went to see John? You heard about John. Now let me tell you about John. John was preaching in some camel draws. He had on some camel speedos. And didn't have on no shirt. So God said, when you went out to see John, what did you expect to see? Did you expect to see a reed shaking with the wind? Did you expect to see somebody scary? Somebody trembling? Tell somebody said you know somebody scared. You got the wrong person. See, that's how people try to corner their pastor, you know, make the pastor scared. I ain't coming to church no more. Well, they don't go ahead and do what you want to do, but don't think I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you better not preach that sermon. Oh, really? <laughs> don't think I'm scared. Well, I know something about you. That's all right. I know more than I, about me than you know about me. <laughs> don't think I'm scared. Ha, 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 ha. Don't think because I got problems and I got some infirmities and some weaknesses, that makes me scary. That doesn't make me scary. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know the God I serve. Hallelujah. You know, half the police can pull you over ain't scared of you, but most of them, hallelujah, was the kids in school that lost every fight. But they ain't scared of you because they know who they got behind them. So the Bible said, what did you go to see? A reed shaking in the wind? Go, go to the next verse. Amen. A man clothed in soft raiment. In other words, he's saying, John wasn't no reed shaking in the wind, and he wasn't no man clothed in no soft raiment. See, a lot of us, we can't get what God has for us because we too soft. It's your pretty self. <laughs> you so cute. I don't care about cute. Oh, you, you pastor, I just love the way you match your, your suits together. And I'm traveling today, going to LA after this, so I wear the sweatshirt. But you see me say all that, amen. You know, AK is my initial, amen. See that? What does it say? AK, what? 47. You know what that is, right? I'm packing, baby. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. I'm packing. No, I ain't giving up. I ain't quitting. I'm not pretty. I'm not pretty. I'm not pretty, pretty Keith. I'm not, I'm not cute. I'm not, I'm not trying to be appealing. I'm trying, I'm not trying to be nice when it comes to your healing and your breakthrough. I'm not, I'm not worried about being cute when it comes to my grandson being cured. I ain't, I ain't worried about no cuteness. What, I'm supposed to be cute? I'm not worried about cute when I know it's a spirit of suicide operating on people and they want to take their lives. I'm not trying to be cute when I know the devil want to get your daughters and your sons. I ain't trying to be pretty, hallelujah, and dress in fine raiment. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. See, a lot of us can't get through the gate because we let our crippleness take away our violence and our resolve. 
<laughs> but no, 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 no. So then, here, here's another reason. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, a lot of people lose our violence because of the people we let carry us. Just mm. somebody say, put care of them. And they'll learn how to stand on their own. See, a lot of y'all, you like people in your life that are carry you. Go back to Acts chapter 3, please. Hallelujah. The Bible says that, look, look what it says, Acts, Acts 3 verse 2 in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says he was born lame, crippled from his mother's womb, and because it's been so long, he, he, you know, from his mother's womb, he's been doing this for so long, he ain't got no more violence. So a lot of y'all come to church like that every Sunday. You've been saved 15 years, but you don't lost your violence. You, you ain't got no, you ain't got no passion no more. You know, it's just a routine. It's just something you do. You just come. You, you ain't got no violence. And, and the Bible says the kingdom of the violence, the violence take it. They don't ask for it. They don't, they don't cry for it. They pray, but after they pray, they just go take it. They go get it. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, whom they, they don't say who the they was, they laid them daily at the gate. See, a lot of us have lost our violence because we've allowed people to enable us. Just exactly. somebody say, I had all I can stand, and I, I can't stand no more. Look at the neighbors. Get out of here with that mess. Amen. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody putting up with that mess no more. Get on somewhere with that. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor, can we meet? No. Hell no, we can't meet. Get on somewhere. Until I see you standing up and really fighting the fight of faith, you go on somewhere. Hallelujah. But don't be messing with my anointing with your mess. Don't nobody care about your mess until you want to try to line up with God the right way. Don't be coming up in my face asking me to pray for you until you get some violence in you. Amen. I ain't praying for you. What I'm going to pray for, and then you're going to get up and act like a sissy for. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm telling about how many scriptures you know. How willing are you to stand on them? To fight? Where is it when you did all the stand? Hallelujah, just stand. And then the Bible says just don't stand. The Bible says stand with your loins girded about with the armor of God. Let the devil know, come on. Hallelujah. Trying to take my life. Trying to take my blessing. Trying to mess up my family. Trying to steal my kids. Trying to destroy. Y'all think this serious up in the air. Play in church. You ain't got to be around too many religious people. I don't care if you said about how much your alligator shoes cost. I don't care what your title is. Hallelujah. It's a whole lot of heavyweight champs. They have a title and got knocked out. Don't care. How violent are you? I saw this old fool boxer on TV the other day. It was a video. He's standing up in the Congress with the little Mexican cat and he clowned. Clown, and he gets in the ring, walks up on him, and starts humping up. He got his <laughs> natural donkey kicked. I was so glad that Mexican whooped his tail. And I was like, I'm glad. You gonna step up in the ring with an opponent playing? Yeah. Uh, the right. devil is your adversary. You gotta learn to quit playing with God and get serious. Jesus. Just your name, I said, I'm too crippled to play. Uh, see, this is where a lot of y'all will pastor, you know, when you 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 deal, you deal, that's why you gotta get serious. About your uh, be violent. Yeah, yeah, you got some infirmities and weaknesses. Yes. Try you gotta get serious. In Jesus' name. So the Bible said, lay them at the temple daily, which is called beautiful, to then touch them on there and say, you got to be violent enough yeah, violent to enough. quit settling, to quit settling. settling. for chump change. Yeah. Chump change. See, a lot yeah. of y'all, amen, you can't get blessed because you're willing to settle for chump change. You just, just think it's in the game. Because it's chump change. 
know, just, just, just letting it, this, I'm going to stay on the job because, you know, I need the job. You know, people, hallelujah, that get promoted and get things in their life that bring blessings to their life are people who are violent to say, I'm not just settling for that. I'm not just settling for that. Hallelujah. It's okay. I, I ain't quitting. I'm here right now. But believe me, I'm not just settling for this job. Hallelujah. You got to be violent enough to say, no, this ain't all God got for me. Are you following me? Yeah. Ooh, so what happened? What happened that this man, after so long of a time, finally made it through the gate? Go to verse 3. It started with Peter. <laughs> Tell somebody and say, God, God will send somebody your way that will challenge you to be more violent. Oh, I know a lot of times God don't like being challenged like Pastor Thor be challenging you. But let me pull up my pants, hallelujah, to let you show you how I really don't care in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I know you don't like nobody preaching to you and challenging your faith, but I'm going to tell you, you better get out that sissy side spirit if you want to get blessed. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I'm going to tell you right now, you better quit playing church and put on your armor and realize that if you won't get your healing and your breakthrough, see, it took somebody radical. It took somebody violent to get him to be violent. Well, how do you know? Because I know who Peter was. He was a reed. He was the exact thing that Jesus said John was it. You know what his name meant? Simon. It meant shady reed. But once he met Jesus, Jesus changed it to rock. So it took somebody violent. See, this is the man that quit. This is the man who told Jesus, I never deny him. Then when Jesus got crucified, denied him three times. This is the man, hallelujah, that understood that if I'm going to win this race, I've got to have some violence to my walk with God. Hallelujah. Okay, about this pretty praise song you singing. You better be like David. After you sing them songs, you better go kill you some Philistines. You better put on your armor and go out here and say, I done done all the singing. I, I'm so tired. I'm tired. Oh, 65 faith. Playing in church. And the devil ravaging your families and your community and your kids. You don't get serious right now. Some of your sons and daughters are going to be homosexuals. <laughs> you think I'm playing. Yeah, don't get serious. Because you know what? They very violent about what they believe. <laughs> you better get violent. You Ain't nobody playing. This is serious. So it took Peter and John. Peter and John. Tell somebody that they had a prayer life. Say yeah, so they understood the spiritual warfare. The Bible said Peter and John went up into the temple at the night hour, being the hour of prayer. And the Bible says, as Peter and John walked by, they saw the man. And the first thing they told the man. The Bible says they fastened their eyes on him and said, look at me. Look at the somebody and say, Pastor says, Pastor says, look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Can I preach to you for a minute? Amen. You got a great example of somebody who was crippled, who is broke, who is weak, but I ain't no punk. Amen. I'm going to tell you that right now. Amen. I ain't no Amen. sissy. But see, what y'all do, y'all think I'm too weird. So instead of you looking at me and saying, you know what? If God could bless, let, let me tell you who I am. Turn, turn to 1 Corinthians 1 27. This is who I am. This is who I am. Just to settle anything else that you may be wondering. 1 Corinthians 1 27. For God has chosen 
That's me. Tell somebody to say, Pastor. Pastor. It's, it's chosen. It's chosen. But he's foolish. Mm-hmm. But I mix up the wise. Mm-hmm. I'm weak. But I confuse people who think they're strong. Go ahead. Go to the next verse. I'm base, which means I'm not elegant. I'm not refined. And I'm despised. That's who I am. So God says, why don't you look at your pastor? But see, y'all too busy. Looking and saying, well, you know. See, I, I, well, I see how you got it. A lot of y'all, the reason the kingdom of God don't manifest itself more in this church, y'all play too much. Y'all play with people. I, I said, hey, look up this video. It's called Repent and Submit by Juanita Bible. And she talks about how people don't honor spiritual leaders. And she said she was on that. She said she, she said she had become a nationally known speaker, making millions of dollars, but she belonged to a church she had been in for years, and she started feeling like she was about something. And the Lord rebuked her and said, you know what? That same pastor that brought you up is the one that's going to make sure you get to where you're going. But see, with John, this is what people do. They won't, they won't look to Peter and John. Oh, you know, pastor's a little too off the hook. He's a little too over the top. Oh, really? I'm a little too over the top, huh? So what y'all do, you'll entertain people that have talked about your pastor, talked about your church family, talked about your ministry. You'll entertain them. You'll go to dinner with them. You'll talk to them on the phone. Then when you talk to them about, when you talk to me about them, you won't tell them the same thing you tell me. See, and they won't talk to me because they know me and they know I ain't playing. They know I'm serious. So what they'll do, they'll talk to you. And you know, you buy them to barbecue and act like everything is cool with them and all this. I don't do that. I don't do that. You know why? Because this is a warfare. And they would have been killed if they was in a real army. Amen. Glory to God. I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't, I don't do it because I understand the whole dynamic. I understand the spiritual ramifications of being a quitter and a coward. And somebody sowing discord behind your back. I understand the spiritual ramifications of being a deserter and disloyal. I understand spiritual ramifications of someone who will sow discord among brethren. Yes, yes. And they know that about me. So they'll figure they can talk to you because you're not like pastor. But what's the scripture say? It's enough that the student be like the teacher. Amen. Oh, you get like me, you start going through a little more hell. <laughs> you start going through a little more hell, you'll get just like me. You'll see AK come right out you. <laughs> see, that's what, look what Peter and John did. Peter and John said, look on us. Then the next thing Peter and John looked at him and said, check it out, homie. I ain't got no chump change for you. <laughs> I ain't got no chump change for you. I ain't got no kind words for you when you ain't been to church in three weeks and ain't nobody heard for you. I ain't, I ain't go, oh, how you doing, brother? It's glad to see you. No, I got, but I got for you. Where you been? Where, where you at? What you, what's going on with you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we in a warfare. We fight for your kids, your family, your healing, your breakthrough. You want your son here? How many of you want your kids blessed? You want your kids blessed? Okay, then it's a warfare then. It's on. 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 My baby got an accident yesterday. That's a, see, I think in the spirit. First thing jumped in my spirit was, okay, devil. Okay, devil. Okay. Okay. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But the question is, are you? You willing to fight? Yeah. You willing to be violent? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you got a little poodle on your blood. A little poodle blood. You want to go to the to the dog room and get all cut up. Looking all poodleish. I ain't worried about that. Hallelujah. I ain't worried about that. Are you willing to be violent? Amen. Take on more of a violent thing? Amen. I, I, I get challenged all the time about whether or not I'm going to take a violent stance. All the time. That, I, if I could say in 25 years of passion, that's been the one common denominator about my passion. I always get challenged to see if somebody can get me to relent. And I get it from the most honest, expecting people. People you would never think would challenge you. But they do. And what they, I hope they learn is that it ain't going to happen. Too much at stake. I want to be blessed too much for that. Can't do it. <laughs> I'm going to keep fighting, man. When it's done, I want to I hear the Lord say, well done. You wasn't perfect. But you was faithful. Yeah. You good and faithful servant. Yeah. You weren't perfect. I, I got a list of things you did wrong. Yeah. But the one thing I can't say, you wasn't no punk. Yeah. You wasn't scary. Yeah. You wasn't fearful. You didn't compromise things. Because, you know, you know, you know, sometimes when people know stuff about you, they think it's gonna make you comp you know, compromise. So what? Who cares? Not not doing it. Amen. <laughs> no, not me. Amen. I don't do that. Not for the Lord. Amen. Now, I compromise some stuff I want to do. But not, not for the Lord. I, I, don't, I don't do that. I don't do that. See, and then what I learned, when you become that type of a person, people play you like he's a chump. They play you like you're a chump, you know. You know, people always want to pass the compromise, and when you do, they don't respect you. Right. <laughs> I don't do that. No. And see, that's the kingdom dynamic. Kingdom is close, y'all. Question is, you gonna be violent enough to take it? You gonna be violent enough in your faith? Or you gonna let the world, you know? Change in that you know, I'm Pastor AK Throw, I'm Apostle AK Throw. I have a title, I've authored two books, I've trained at least 20 people in the fivefold ministry. They didn't go to seminary, they didn't go to that seminary, they went to AK Throw church ministry pastoral training. That's what they did, and they good. I put, I put Ishmael, Charles, Pastor Jackson, Pastor Terry, Pastor Anita, Pastor Harrison. I put them up against anybody in terms of ministering the word. I, I have no, no, mm -mm. no, no, I have no, no fear whatsoever that if I'm gone, there ain't going to be no word preached. I don't fear that. Amen. So now, I guess I can be cute now. Huh? I'm cute. Cute, I care. Carrie, going crazy. That's my secretary. You know? I just mess, mess with her. Just get her mad. See the East Oakland come out of her. Amen. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Because, y'all, this is serious, y'all. I, I see the bigger, <clears throat> the biggest sin in the church is that we've taught people how to play church. Instead of be the church. Yeah. And we try to make that place stuff the real thing in an act. Now I'm talking about some real stuff. I'm talking about your kids. I'm talking about, hallelujah, I was, I was praying the other day. I'm 60 years old, so I'm doing a little mad. I'm, I'm thinking Shania is 16, so 17. So let's say Shania 
has a, uh, gets married in 10 years and has a baby. In 10 years, I'll be 71. So then let's say, hallelujah, take her baby another 20 years to have a baby, I'll be 91. So that's my granddaughter, and then that's my uh, great-granddaughter and my great-great. So God is saying, you can see your great-great-grandkids, and if I had another 10, that's uh, another 20, that's 100-something, and that's possible, amen, you see see your great, that's what I'm thinking about. I ain't thinking about this stuff y'all thinking about. I ain't thinking about all that. I ain't thinking about this old, you know, I just want to get to the to the to the next house. I ain't thinking about all that. And I can get and you can get to the next house. Yeah. I'm thinking about Yeshua and Uriah and Major and Yo Yo and, and that's what I'm thinking about. Asiah and Amaya and that's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about a little bear right here, amen. That's what I'm thinking about. But what kind of faith is it going to be in there to face this world and to be victorious? To be overcomers? Amen. Amen. Christian and Phoenix and all, you know, all, that's what I'm thinking about. Salome, read. Read me, Jesus. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> read ain't no joke. You see your spirit on read? Read, read right here with all these little black kids. Read ain't move. <laughs> read while in the room looking like that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, but see, man, you got to impart something in them. There's got to be some faith imparted in them. Yeah. This ain't no joke. Yeah. This is something.